I'm back. I'm doing this every day. I'm actually doing it. Wow. Dedication. Anyways, uh, so now since we did like two episodes of like no right hand involved in anything and no sound, just movements. Now we could add the right hand. And so the first thing we're going to do, actually, no, wait, I lied. There's going to be one more thing that we're going to practice without the right hand. And that's going to be just, I'll put my bow down. Okay. This is going to be, we're going to practice shifting today. So the thing, the topic today is shifting without a shoulder rest. It's a little bit, um, I don't know, but it's new. And this is a completely different concept that your whole hand is moving with you to help support you, support the instrument and stuff. So actually, we're just going to shift down. Oh, yeah, what am I going to say? We're going to just shift backwards. I don't do this. I can't really, um... I can't really demonstrate it, but because I already know how to shift with um without a shoulder rest. But we're just going to slide up and down, just like this back and forth. And you should have a feeling eventually. For a lot of people, they don't know how to do it, and I can't not do it anymore. I this sound. This is probably not the best demonstration. But what you're going to do is you're going to shift down, and a lot of people when they shift down, they're actually clenching the neck too much with their hand like this and then the instrument is being pulled away from them. So we're just actually going to do this ourselves so that way that's, and that we know what we're doing, right? That we feel it. So like if you're clenching on your neck too much with your hand, your hand is actually pulling the instrument from under your chin, right? So, so we can actually just practice that. So tensing up our hand a lot, right? Really tense and then, and feel it pulling away from us when we're shifting or when we're going up as you're pushing into us. And so that's a good way to check if your left hand is too tense. Because if your left hand is too tense, that means that you're actually pulling the instrument when you're going down, right? So like, yeah, there's that. <laughs> and so be careful of that. And like always, I don't know if I said this in any of the other videos, but when I should have probably. But when we're practicing left hand, first of all, without a shoulder, it is just so good mentally to have your right hand here on the instrument so that no matter what happens, if you lose control if your muscles give out or if you're just tired if you're not paying attention or if you make a mistake the instrument will not fall and that will just give you the benefit of the doubt to be able to make mistakes and not like oh my god if my instrument falls that's like I don't know why that's one of the biggest pitfalls of violin just uh, the instrument falling even though me for instance I've never dropped an instrument ever in my entire life knock on wood but, but I don't know a lot of people have never, ever dropped their instrument, but like that's just like in the back of our mind for some reason. But anyways, enough of that type of thing. So yeah, so now that we have that motion down, the sliding with this and really checking to make sure that the instrument's not really moving too much. Now we're actually going to play sounds. Ooh, <laughs> yeah. So we're actually going to start with um, whatever string you feel, whichever string you hate the least. Let's go with that. <laughs> and um, we're actually just gonna play with the third finger. Gonna play with the third finger and then just shift up really slowly to the harmonic. And Pasuk does me. Oh, why am I saying that in German? Sorry. I need to, sp I need to speak more of what is the word? Deutlich? Uh... Anyways, <laughs> if you spoke German, you understood what I meant. But. So we're gonna do that again and go to the harmonic and make sure that your movement is really nice. Spend some time up here, maybe move your shoulder around. Sorry. And that kind of thing. And now that we can do that, now that we went to one harmonic, now we can try to go to the other harmonics too, right? So. And the whole like, point or idea of this exercise is that we um, finally learn how to move efficiently. And we're not really trying to get to a certain position. We're just trying to get to the harmonics. And it's much easier to play harmonics than actually trying to get to a certain note, right? Because then we're actually just retraining our body how to move with the instrument. So we can do that on every string, right? So... Oops. <laughs> And I'll do it another angle like this one, so then you can actually see what my thumb's doing, right? So, first of all, when shifting with your, um, with shifting without a shoulder rest, you need to make sure that your thumb is very loose, right? So, <laughs> 
Exactly. And uh, maybe I'll demonstrate one time. If your thumb is really tense, it'll be like almost impossible, right? Because it's like almost impossible, right? If our thumb is tense, it'll be like. I'm not really sure if you could tell, but it didn't feel right. <laughs> so just making sure that your thumb is loose is one thing that we can do to improve this. And so, like I said, now we can go to all harmonics. So. I shouldn't be vibratoing, my bad. <laughs> Again. Yeah, so that's kind of the idea, and, um, or you can go. You can also practice that with farm harmonics, so you can do that with every finger. And that, then that teaches your fingers, all that teaches your fingers and your hands to not be so tense the entire time. So, let's do that again. Uh... So, that was actually really nice. <laughs> I hope these are more exercises and uh, that's just one, those are just a couple of exercises for today. And we'll keep working on this transitioning from no shoulder rest to a shoulder rest. And uh, I mean, happy practicing and take your time. Time is what you need. Anyways, good luck. <laughs>